Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at the extrema of functions. Well, what are extrema? Well, the extrema are referring to the maximum and minimum values. The maximum value of a function is the largest value in its range. And the minimum value is going to be of a function is the smallest value in its range. And again, these are what we call the extreme values or the extrema of the function. Now, sometimes there is no maximum or minimum values. Instead, we need to look at what we call relative extrema. What that means is that those are situations where we restrict, when we restrict the domain, then we may have um, rel other relative minimum or relative maximum uh, values, which we'll look at here. Let's look at some of these examples. In this first example, it says that, uh, or we look at the graph, and we, if we were to ask to find the maximum or minimum values, there would be none. Because this graph, as we look at it, it goes infinitely up, and it goes infinitely down. So there is no maximum value, and there's no minimum value, because it keeps going up and down. Now, I could restrict the domain. Maybe I restrict the domain to just be this section here, in which case, if I restrict the domain there, I would have a relative minimum value. Or maybe I restrict the domain to go to be in just this piece here, this section. Well, if that's the case, then I do have a relative maximum at B. Let's look at the next example. The next example goes infinitely up on one end. It goes infinitely up on the other end. Well, that means that in this case, I do have a minimum value. In this case, my minimum value is going to be C, because that is the lowest point in our range there. And again, it does not have a maximum value because it goes infinitely up. Now, I could restrict the domain to give us other relative maximum and minimum values. For example, I could restrict the domain to be just this section. So I would have that relative minimum would be C. I could restrict the domain to be this section here, in which case I would have a relative minimum at E. Or I could restrict the domain to give me a relative minimum at G. I could also restrict the domain to get relative maximum values for this one. I could restrict the domain between or to be in that section, in which case I'd have a relative maximum at D. And I could restrict it in this section here to give me a relative maximum uh, value of F. So that's a situation where we have a minimum value but no maximum. Well, we could have other situations where we have no minimum, but we have maximum values, like this next one. Because this next one, it goes infinitely down in both directions. So there is no minimum value. But we can see that there is a maximum value at h. We could also say that it's a relative maximum value at h, because we could restrict the domain. Um, and so also refer to that as a relative maximum. But this one has no uh, relative minimum. Like, there's no spot that I could restrict the domain where I would have a dip in that graph, where I would have a vertex. Um, I might say, well, we could restrict the domain like this. And then if I did, wouldn't this point here be the relative minimum? No, because that's just a point in the graph. It is not a vertex. This is the way that you need to look at it. Let's look at this last example. This last example is unique because, as we can see here, that it goes infinitely up and infinitely down. So there's no minimum or maximum values. And there's no way for me to restrict the domain to me to, for me to get a relative minimum or relative maximum values. So this one's unique because this has no, not only does it have no maximum or minimum values, but also has no relative maximum or minimum values either. Let's look at some other examples. OK, let's look at this first example. It says, consider the graph of the function where we have x cubed minus 5x minus 2 shown at the right. They tell us that a relative maximum occurs when x is approximately negative 1.3, and a relative minimum occurs when x is approximately 1.3. We want to describe the intervals when f is increasing. Now, one thing that's important to note is that we read a graph from left to right. So as I look at this graph from left to right, we're asked to figure out when is this graph increasing. Well, it's increasing as we get closer to this negative 1.3. But after we hit where x is negative 1.3, it decreases. Once we get to where x is 1.3, it goes back to increasing again. So here's how we can describe where it's increasing. It's increasing when x is less than negative 1.3. So that interval, when x is negative 1.3, it's increasing as we look at it from left to right. 
And it's also increasing when x is greater than uh, 1.3. That's what that should read. Well, now let's look at where f is decreasing. f is decreasing going for, in this segment here, going from when x is negative 1.3 to when x is a positive 1.3. So the way that we would write that is we would say that um, our values for x are between negative 1.3 and 1.3 by using inequalities. Let's look at this other example together. It says consider the graph of this function where we have negative 2 thirds x to the fourth, 3x cubed minus 5x at the right. The x coordinates of key points are labeled with letters. We want to figure out using letters, or using the letter labels, and what intervals is h negative? Well, that's referring to when is our answer going to be negative. And if I look at the graph, the areas where our graph is negative are these sections here. So these are the intervals where the h's are going to be negative, or when our value is going to be negative. So the way we can describe that using letter labels and inequalities is we could say that when x is less than this a value, our answer, our value, is going to be negative. When uh, going from when x is c and when x is e, so when x is between those two points, when x is between c and e, our values are negative. And when x is bigger than this value g, our answer is also going to be negative. So we would describe that like this. We would say that x is going to be less than a. We're going to say that x is between c and e, and that when x is greater than g. At all of those intervals is when our value for h is going to be negative. Now it says using the letter labels, in which interval is h positive? Well, that's going to be in these two sections. Well, in these two sections, this is we can describe this uh, by saying that um, our values for x are going to go from a to c, because between a and c, between those two points, our values are positive. And between the points E and G, our values are also positive. So we'd say that X is going to be between E and G. So that's how we can describe that using inequalities. Now that's where we're actually going to end this video, looking at the maximum and minimum values, and looking at some how to identify intervals of, at a, of a graph. In the next section of this video, or the next part of the video that you'll be watching, you're going to be looking at this. You're going to be looking at um, how to find the zeros of a function and what the zeros are. So with that, we'll stop this video. So go ahead and watch that next video so you can learn about how to find these zeros of a polynomial.